Good morning, everyone. Thank you all for, for coming out today. Uh, I I'm, I've been told that this is the first time in 34 years that the ceremonies had to, been, had to be moved inside. So uh, thank you all for coming out. It just shows once again that, that Reading remembers. And today really is all about remembering. At this time, I ask you all to stand, if you're able, uh, for the invocation by Air Force veteran Father da Darren Coloruso from St. Athanasius Parish. Heavenly Father, with a sober heart, we come before you this Memorial Day. We pause for a moment and call to mind all those who died in the service of our nation since its founding. Look with mercy on your brave and selfless and our brave and selfless brothers and sisters who did not shirk from their task, but gave themselves completely to the cause of defending and protecting us all. Bless all who have given their lives for the sake of liberty and grant them eternal rest with you. Particularly strengthen and console our Gold Star families who share in their sacrifice. We remember also our brave men and women now serving in our armed forces, particularly our loved ones and those from our town of Reading who serve both home and abroad. Dear God, send out your angels to protect them, help them discharge their duties honorably and well, bring them home safely to their families and loved ones. O oh Lord, bring your peace and mercy to our troubled world. Banish violence from our midst and wipe away our tears, that we may all deserve to be called your sons and daughters. Amen. 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 Thank you, Father Colarusso. The Reading Police Department will now present the colors. Please remain standing for the national anthem, which will be performed by the Reading High School Memorial Band Ensemble. Detail. Attention. The command of post colors, right with the four on. Detail, post colors. Detail, present arms. Please have a seat. Almost 240 years ago, at the young age of just 20 years old, Sergeant Joshua Eaton was the first person from Reading to die in battle for our country. He was killed in the Second Battle of Saratoga on October 7, 1977 during the American Revolution. He was the only casualty from Reading to die during that conflict. 50 years ago, another 20-year-old was killed in the service to our country. Marine Corps Lance Corporal Robert James Kroos died in Vietnam on July 15, 1966. He lies at rest at Forest Glen Cemetery. Robert is a 1964 graduate of Reading Memorial High School, where he was a star athlete. Immediately following graduation, he enlisted in the Marines. 
and was sent to Vietnam. Today, Robert would have been celebrating his 70th birthday. Today, I'd like to honor Reading resident and Gold Star mother, Evelyn Kroos. Along with Robert's brother, David, his sisters, Debbie and Karen, and David's son, Robert. Today we remember the fallen, and we honor you, their survivors. Let us all remember Robert and his family during family, along with all Gold Star families that paid the ultimate sacrifice. I'd like to present to you a certificate rem remembering the fallen and honoring the survivors. Along with a gold star pen. In 1868, retired Union General John Logan organized the first National Decoration Day to honor the fallen after the Civil War. This has become our Memorial Day. I now would like to invite Kathleen Walsh from the Reading Memorial High School to read General Logan's Memorial Day General Orders. The 30th day of May, 1868, is designated for the purpose of strewing with flowers or otherwise decorating the graves of comrades who died in defense of their country during the late rebellion and whose bodies now lie in almost every city, village, and hamlet churchyard in the land. In this observance, no former ceremony is prescribed, but posts and comrades will in their own way arrange such fitting services and testimonials of respect as circumstances may permit. We are organized comrades, as our regulations tell us, for the purpose, among other things, of preserving and strengthening those kind and fraternal feelings which have bound together the soldiers, sailors, and marines who united to suppress the late rebellion. What can aid more to assure this result than by cherishing tenderly the memory of our heroic dead, who made their breast a barricade between our country and its foe? Their soldier lives were the valley of freedom in a race in chains, and their death a tattoo of rebellious tyranny in arms. We should guard their graves with sacred vigilance. All that the consecrated wealth and taste of the nation can add to their adornment and security is but a fitting tribute to the memory of her slain defenders. Let no wanton foot tread rudely on such hallowed grounds. Let pleasant paths invite the coming and going of reverent visitors and found mourners. Let no vandalism of avarice of neglect, no ravages of time testify to the present or to the coming generations that we have forgotten. As a people, the cost of free and undivided republic. If other eyes grow dull and other hands slack and other hearts in cold, cold in the solemn trust, ours shall keep it well as long as the light and warmth of life remain in us. Let us then, at the time appointed, gather around their sacred remains and garland the passionless mounds above them with choicest flowers of springtime. Let us raise above them the dear old flag they save from dishonor. Let us in this solemn presence renew our pledges to aid and assist those whom they have left among us as their sacred charges upon the nation's gratitude the soldiers and sailors, widow and orphan. It is the purpose of the commander in chief to inaugurate this observance with the hope it will be kept up from year to year while the survivor of the war remains to honor the memory of his departed comrades. He earnestly desires the public press to call to attention this order and lend its friendly aid in bringing to notice the, com to the notice of comrades in all parts of the country in time for simultaneous compliance therewith. Department commanders <coughs> will use every effort to make this order effective by order of John A. Logan, commander in chief. Thank you, Kathleen. The high school band will now perform America the Beautiful.
Okay, thank you very much. At this time, Will Myers, Life Scout from Troop 702 in Reading, will read Lincoln's Gettysburg Address. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation, conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Now that we are engaged in a great civil war, testing whether that nation or any nation so conceived and so dedicated can long endure. We are met on a great battlefield of this war. We have come to dedicate a portion of that field as a final resting place for those here gave their lives that the nation might live. It is altogether fitting and proper that we should do this. But in a larger sense, we cannot dedicate, we cannot consecrate, and we cannot hallow this ground. The brave men, living and dead, who struggled here have consecrated it far above our poor power to add or detract. The world will little note nor long remember what we say here but it can never forget what they did here. It is for us, the living, rather, to be dedicated here to the unfinished work which they who fought here have thus far so nobly advanced. It is rather for us to be here dedicated to the great task of re remaining before us, that from the, s the honored dead we take increased devotion that cause for which they gave the last full measure of devotion. That we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain. That this nation under God shall have new birth of freedom. And that the government of the people, by the people, for the people shall not perish from this earth. Thank you. Thank you, Will. I'd now like to introduce Mr. Daniel Ensminger, Reading Board of Selection, for, memor for our Memorial Day address. Yeah. Thank you, Kevin. Yeah. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, honored guests and officers, on behalf of the Reading Board of Selectmen, I welcome you to this Memorial Day celebration. Today, we come together to remember those soldiers, seamen, airmen, Coast Guardsmen and Marines who have sacrificed their lives throughout America's history in order, in order that we may continue to be a free nation. From the brave colonists who won our freedom in the Revolutionary War, to the heartbreaking battles of the Civil War, to the doughboys of World War I, to the GIs of World War I, Korea and Vietnam, to those who have given their lives in the recent conflicts in Iraq and Afghanistan. The sons and daughters of America have done their part to preserve this nation. They have served us well, and many have paid the ultimate price so that we as a community, a state, and a nation can maintain and cherish our freedom and ensure a lasting, a lasting peace. Today, we also remember the Americans who are still missing in action. We honor them, and our nation is determined to account for all of them. Every time we hear, watch, or read the news, we are reminded that liberty is a rare commodity in this world. We Americans owe our freedom of choice and action to those men and women in uniform who have served this nation and its interests in time of need. Another generation is fighting a new war against an enemy that threatens the peace and stability of the world. Across the globe, our military is standing directly between our people and the worst dangers in the world. And Americans are grateful to have such brave defenders. The war on terrorism has brought great costs. For those who have recently lost loved ones in Afghanistan and Iraq or through domestic acts of terrorism, today is a day of solemn remembrance. In preparing my comments, I reflected on how past sacrifices of our military forces are viewed differently today in America. Prior to and during World War II, nearly every family had one or more members serving in the military. Military service then was a much more shared experience, and people 
inherently understood why their family members were sacrificing for their country. Nowadays, with an all-voluntary military, all-volunteer military, that feeling of kinship is oftentimes lost. Service in the military seems distant and abstract to many. The morality of past wartime decisions has been questioned, such as dropping, the dropping of the atomic bomb on Japan. Many do not remember the valor of the U.S. soldiers who bled and died in World War II in order to defeat a vicious enemy. Had these brave men not sacrificed their lives, we would not have seized key Pacific islands such as Tinian and Iwo Jima. Had we not taken those islands, we would not have been able to drop the two atomic bombs that historians say shortened World War II by years. President Truman later wrote that this decision saved millions of American and Japanese lives that would have been lost in a bloody invasion of Japan. My second point is that many of our fellow Americans seem to have forgotten the significance of this day. Memorial Day to them has become a holiday that marks nothing more than the start of summer and an opportunity to enjoy a tasty barbecue. I know that we who are gathered here today keenly appreciate today's significance, and again, I thank you for attending the ceremony today. As we honor our fallen hero's memory, let us resolve that all Americans who lost their lives in battle, their sacrifices, and their valor will be remembered forever by all Americans. As we go forth to share the blessings of this greatest of lands, let us never forget the debt that we also share a debt that can never be repaid to men and women just like ourselves who gave up all they had and paid the ultimate sacrifice so that we might be free. Let us also pledge to work in every community, state, and city across the nation to ensure a just and lasting peace. May God bless those we honor today, and may God bless America. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Jill Mayberry, United States, United States Air Force, will now read the Roll Call of Honor. Thank you, Kevin. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I will read the veterans who have passed away from Reading since last veteran um, Memorial Day. Richard Allen, Ronald Anderson, Joseph Bevilacqua, Richard R. Burns, Josephine Caratelli, John P. Collins, Stanley H. Corkum, Joseph W. Cormier, Robert Dolber, Robert Fitzgerald, David Fitzpatrick, Clifford Gibson, Michael T. Gilman, Robert A. Gerard, Jacob Goldberg, Lawrence Grant, Glenn Hodson, Gerald A. Hutchinson, Ermino Martoli, James J. Matigue, John Morrison, Arthur Nigro, William O'Brien, Daniel A. Paglia, John Patano, John Polomino, John A. Renone, Norman Rice, Anthony Rickley, Richard Rogers, Patricia Tucker, Charles Vivian, Joseph W. Wiedick, Raymond Zwicker, Monty J. Zopati, Paul Chilio. May they rest in peace. Thank you, Jill. At this time, I would like to introduce Captain Michael Hennessy. 
Captain Hennessy received his commission from the College of the Holy Cross and our OTC program in 1964. He spent over five years on active duty assigned to the USS Salomon AO-26 and the Recruit Training Command in San Diego, California. Following release from active duty, Captain Hennessy spent the next 21 years in the Naval Reserve within the New England area. Major assignments included officer in charge of a ship repair facility in Newport, Rhode Island, and commanding officer assignments at a mobile coastal surveillance command, a mobile communications command, and a voluntary training unit. Captain Hennessy, welcome and thank you for being with us today. Mrs. Krause, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. I am deeply honored to be speaking with you today on such an important occasion. We are here this morning to honor our service men and women who have given the ultimate sacrifice to the United States of America. Today gives us time to pause and consider the true meaning of this holiday. Memorial Day represents one day of national awareness and reverence, honoring those Americans who died while defending the values upon which this nation was founded. From the Revolutionary War at Concord and Lexington and at the bitter cold of Valley Forge. From the War of 1812 with the bombardment of Fort McHenry, which served as inspiration of Francis Scott Key's words immortalized by our national anthem. From the Western Front during the Great War, in World War II at Pearl Harbor, the battles of Midway, Guadalcanal, Normandy, the Bulge, Iwo Jima, in Vietnam at Khe Sanh, and more recently from the Persian Gulf, 9-11, to the war on terrorism, our citizens, our fathers, mothers, our brothers, sisters, our friends have answered the call and sacrificed their lives for the freedoms we enjoy today. This tells us that freedom is not free. A terrible price has been paid by our citizen soldiers, sailors, and airmen for us to enjoy the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. The freedoms of assembly, as we are doing today, speech, religion, the press, judicial rights, and many others. War is not something that should be glorified or sought after. The cost is always high in terms of human sacrifice. However, when significant events occur, it does remind us that one alternative to war is to live in fear. These brave heroes from our war's past must be honored for the profound contribution each and every one of them have made to secure these freedoms, of which the most fundamental freedom is freedom from living in fear. While we honor our fallen heroes today, I believe it is also fitting and proper to pay tribute to another group of heroes, those who live side by side with us in our communities, struggling with the grief of the loss of a loved one, who demonstrated through their actions, no one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. I am referring to our gold star mothers, fathers, and families. Gold Star comes from the World War I custom of families hanging a banner called a service flag 
in a window of their homes which contained a star for each family member serving in the United States Armed Forces. A blue star represented a living service member, while a gold star represented those who had lost their lives in service to their country. I was recently touched by a quote from a gold star mother. She was talking about Memorial Day and what it meant to her. She said, Memorial Day is not barbecues, not hot dogs, not family get-togethers, not the first day of summer. It is a solemn holiday where we honor those who laid down their lives for our nation. Let us remember Gold Star families today. In closing, Memorial Day is also a day to reflect upon the sacrifices of our current active duty and reserve servicemen and women and their families who often are left behind to cope with the responsibilities of maintaining a household. Their spouses or caretakers now take on increased demands and decision making as well as the dual role of mother and father. Let us also think about our veterans and retirees who have faithfully served our nation in the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, and Coast Guard. Wouldn't it be nice for us throughout the year to randomly approach those serving and those who have served with the kind and meaningful words, thank you for your service. These individuals have carried and continue to carry on the traditions of those who came before them, many of whom gave their lives so that we can enjoy the land of the free and the home of the brave. To all those current and former service members here today, I say thank you for your service. God bless and protect all those now in the service of our country. And God bless the, Uni the United States of America, the sweet land of liberty. Thank you. Thank you very much, Captain Hennessy. Their high school band will now perform the Battle Hymn of the Republic, followed by taps.
That concludes our services here today. Thank you all very, very much for attending. First, I'd like to thank everyone who participated in today's services. Also, thank you to the amazing Cemetery Grounds crew who did outstanding work to prepare for the, for the services today, as they do all year round. I'd also like to thank Frank Driscoll, who is the Soldiers and Sailors Graves Officer, who carried out General Logan's order and decorated over 2,200 graves in town with a small army of volunteers, many who I see here today. today. So thank you very much. I'd also like to thank the, the Reading Selectmen, the town manager, and all those who support veterans throughout the year. May God bless all those who have gone before us and all those currently serving to protect our freedom. Services will continue. We'll have a short ceremony at Laurel Hill Cemetery at 1015, and we will continue at Forest Glen Cemetery at 1045, Charles Lawn Cemetery at 1130, and at Wood, em Wood End Cemetery at 12 noon. Thank you very much for attending today. Have a great day. Thank you.